Hello world, Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and computer science professor with another short screencast about access. In this screencast, we're going to get back to pulling information out of our database, which is always fun and rewarding. And this time, instead of focusing on individual calculations for each record using calculated fields, we're going to start creating calculations on groups of records, sometimes called aggregate calculations because they aggregate several records together to give you a subtotal. For example, we might want to know which customers order the most products from us. So to get that information, I need the company name out of the customers table, and then I need some information about the unit price and the quantity, which is stored in the order details table. And to connect all that, I needed the orders table as well. I pulled down three fields, the company name out of the customers table, the unit price and the quantity out of the order details table. Now we know that if we wanted a subtotal here, we'd have to create a calculated field which is calculated field name colon, and then multiply the unit price by the quantity. So when I hit my day sheet view button, there are the subtotals for all of these orders. But for this first company, I'd like to add up all these subtotals. I'd like to add up all these quantities. How do I do that? Back to design view. Well, to add up groups of records, we need to click this totals button, which gives us a new row here in our grid, and it's called the total row. So we're going to group all of our company names together. I'm going to delete the unit price field because I don't need that individual piece of information. And I'm going to sum the quantity field and also sum the subtotal field. So now it's going to group all the customers into one record and give me a total quantity and a total subtotal of all their revenue. This is a very powerful analysis. We're down to 89 records because there's 89 different company names. Here's the total number of units that that company has ordered, and here's the total revenue that that company has ordered. Another thing that I always like to do anytime I'm grouping by a field, I'm going to drag the company name field down to the second position and also count, and that will give me a count of the number of records that are in that group. That's also very powerful. This is telling me that this first company has ordered 15 times 201 different items for a subtotal of $5,036.20. If I go to design view and I throw a descending sort order on my subtotal, then I'm going to get my very highest dollar customers at the top because I'm sorting in descending order on this subtotal. So that's the essence of using this totals row to group records together. Typically, you're only grouping by one field, and then you're counting and summing these other fields. Obviously, you can only sum a numeric field, but you can count any field. Okay, that just tells you how many records are in that group. If I remove the totals button, I will get all 2,155 records that are in that data sheet. Back to design view, put the totals row on, group by company name. Now I've got only 89 records because I've only got 89 groups. Quick stop, that represents 86 different line items, 86 different records for total quantity units purchased and a subtotal of the revenue. In this case, I've used both a calculated field that calculates a new piece of data for every record, and I've also used my totals button, which gives me this total row, which allows me to group the records together so that I can get subtotals and summary statistics on groups of records. In one query, you cannot see both the details and the subtotals at the same time, but you can in reports, and we'll be doing that in subsequent screencasts. Now, let me show you one more variation on this summary query. In this case, I'm grouping by both company name and order ID. In other words, I'm going to put the records together by order ID within company name based on these ascending sort. And when you look at this in sheet view, now I'm at 130 records because I have 130 different order IDs, and I've sorted them in ascending order by company name and then by order ID so that we can see all the orders for each company, how many line items are in each order, the sum of the quantities for each order, and the subtotals for each order. So now we're grouping by order instead of all the orders for one customer. So back to design view absolute key to these summary queries, or sometimes called aggregate queries, is how you're grouping the records together. Obviously, you need to group the records together by a field that is repeated in the records of that query. 
So you're almost always grouping by a field out of these parent tables. One customer can have many orders and one order can have many line items. And those are the fields that we use to group the records. Thank you.